That's just wet stuff. It's raining. It's raining. It doesn't rain in Guernsey. Oh, I'm getting wet. Sitting up, mate. Yep. We're going to look at some uh, a bit of land that was once land and now is 30 meters below the surface, I think. So we keep talking about taking some core samples and giving them to an expert to look at this submerged uh, landscape. I never get round to it. So. Someone keeps forgetting to order them. Somebody keeps forgetting to order some. Uh, or we order them and then they get an email two weeks later saying, sorry, we don't ship. So, yeah, I'm going to drop you uh, down the side of a cliff. Cool. And hopefully, uh, some of you might feel uh, do a bit of filming of some uh, submerged landscape. Lovely. Hopefully, if yeah. I can put you in the right spot. <laughs> Welcome back to another dive. Just waiting for Phil to pass through the portal into another world, and there he goes. So we're going to head down to about 30 meters um, off the side of a large reef, almost cliff-like. Uh, we're not quite sure where we're heading, or how long it's going to take us to get there, or even how dark it's going to be. Because it's overcast and it's been raining on the surface, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty dark. Actually fallen probably halfway down the reef I'd say. I'm gonna hit down onto the sand. It actually goes quite a bit deeper than this, probably another 10 meters deeper than this, around about 40, 42, 43 meters. Did we hit the bottom? I'd just wait there for Phil. Phil's on his way. Light levels ain't too bad, but uh, it gets even worse when I put my torches on. Basically the tide is still running. Uh, randomly it's running upwards around here for some reason it's because the tide's coming into the side of the reef and it's basically uprising um, and that's probably why I'm getting all my sand I've just kicked up straight into my face so we're not sure where we're gonna go we want to head south uh, which is almost straight forward from where me and Phil are now so we're gonna head down we gotta be a little bit deeper than this uh, 28 meters isn't really deep enough I want to be down around about 30, 35. So it's a little drop off here. You can see loads of fish everywhere and some sea squirts and all the normal other uh, pink sea fans, uh, chocolate finger sponges, uh, boring sponges, all that sort of stuff. So we're heading a little bit deeper. And as we hit down onto this, this is a, a sandbank that's actually dropping off camera doesn't know justice it's probably dropping down at 30 to 40 degree angle to my left I'm gonna head down that way one thing you notice is the tide is literally just turned on so all this seaweed is starting moving almost instantaneously all together as soon as we hit the bottom uh, we got no option now we are heading north easterly now and it's pulling us deeper and deeper and deeper not really much we can do we just have to go along for the ride see me and Phil trying to make a decision of what we're going to do. We can't swim back against this tide. So I mentioned let's just just go with the go with the drift. So we started in a northeasterly direction. believe how many of these small fish are on this reef I'm not quite sure what they are look a bit small to be sand pelt probably some sort of goby I'm not sure 
thing is, you can't really get close enough to have a look at them. They actually look like poor cud, by the looks of it. They're, um, they like to school together and they love the same environment as pelting really. They're slightly different to pelting because you don't see them uh, vertical stripes. And also they've got like a sort of petrol coloured um, underside to them. And also a proportionately larger eye than the pelt. So if I like it or not now, me and Phil are in for this dive together because I think my rope is now wrapped around his rope. It's not the end of the world. We can stay together. We kind of plan to dive together anyway. It's always good to dive in twos. another huge reef now this one's almost like a pinnacle probably 15 meters tall I suppose well now about 30 meters and if you look to my right it actually slopes away quite a lot into the deep randomly me and Phil are getting pushed along the bottom northeasterly and it seems like our buffs that are back on the surface are heading in the opposite direction it's actually trying to pull us back the way we came looks quite interesting, almost looks like there's a cave inside there. So let's see if we can get close and have a little look inside. We're struggling to actually pull along now. Oh there's loads of fish here, didn't realise there was fish in front of me, couldn't see them. Until I turn the lights back on. untangle mine and feel the ropes get loads and loads of strain on mine trying to pull it out my hand must be doing the same for Phil as well that heads off down into the deep check the sand out when um, I pick it stuff up it's swirling around in circles so it's actually was taking us north easterly which is to my top right down this way and now it's actually coming in towards us. So now it's taking us southwesterly. It's probably because the reef's in the way. So we're going to have to take a left and go back up the reef. Let's quick untangle our ropes only wrapped around twice. Nice and easy. Despite the struggle, I'm still trying to swim up against the tide here. I think the tide's starting to win. The only solution is we are pretty deep and we've been pretty deep for quite a while check my computer and maybe head up at the side of this reef once we get into shallower water there's less pressure on us and the computer should account for that and give us extra extra bottom time Four minutes left before we go into deco. I've got a grand total of three scallops. But I've still got 170 left for air. So I've got quite a bit left. 
but I think I should start winding up now and start getting shallower on this reef. I think our only option is to swim left back the way we came now. See what happens then when we get that way. Trying to winch myself up with my reel as well because for some reason the tide's trying to pull me back down the reef again. So I'll wind myself up a little bit and I put a bit of weight on my buffs. That's what the reel's for. Some more than poor cut on the top of the reef. Plenty of bits of uh, coral here. At least we get to see some nice red sea fingers. These are more common in the Channel Islands than the Dead Man's Fingers, the white one. Come in different colours. It's a pale white one. That was a slightly darker. So there's a boring sponge everywhere. It's full of colour, but we just ain't got time to slow down and have a look. I'm trying to get a little bit shallow and I'm trying to get round the back of this reef. Hopefully the tide will slacken off once we head around the other side of this reef. Uh, by the look of Phil's arm holding on to the reef there, I don't think it's slack around this side of the reef. In fact, I know it's not slack around this side of the reef because it's just picked me and tried uh, pushing me back around the corner. Look at the dust in the water. It's coming straight for us. So, which way isn't the tide running? I'll tell you what, it's time that me and Phil called it a day on this reef. We've gone back up to the surface now. Looks like the uh, jellyfish are just starting in Guernsey now. It's been very late this year. The eagle eye people, you would have seen there was a blue fire jelly just above Phil's head. But one thing there has been a lot of is these sea jellies, these gooseberries, sea gooseberries. There's been absolutely millions of them, even washing up on the beach. And guess what, it's raining. It tends to flatten the sea out when there's rain. It's really cool from underneath. Where have I seen that? Is it just me or the tide was all over the place? <laughs> I've seen the tide come off with my head on the way down. Yeah, no, there was too many, uh, too many uprisings and then they were going north, we were going south. Yeah, you can see the viz is closed up there, look. Yeah. That rain has brought the, uh, brought the viz down a little bit. It's as good as the viz is down there. I know. I couldn't have my lights on because it was uh, very uh, backscattery because of the tide. <laughs> yeah, it's nice and deep. Here comes Richard, he's on his way back. <laughs>
again. <laughs> I've not done a 35 again. It's all weird how the um, how the light levels affect you, what you feel, the motion under the water. Eh? Completely linked together. Dive 2 is in slightly less tide and we are looking for another diver's lost BCD and tank. A um, bit of a mishap, someone thought he had a hold of it and he didn't and it went back to the, back down to the seabed. I think they've been looking for it for probably four to five weeks. So me and Phil's just going to take a, a very slow bimble across the seabed. And there we go, there's a lot less tide now. Visibility is perfect for looking for lost gear because I can see probably 10 meters in each direction so we have to keep our eyes peeled. This long-legged spider crab decided they wanted to adopt the appearance of one of the Muppets. Looks like it's got loads of really furry hair on it. It's just the seaweed that's grown. Really good camouflage. crabs that have adopted this strategy. Here you can see a scallop has got a long wavy piece of seaweed growing from it as well. Notice the scallops are really well camouflaged in this area. It's a bit of a nightmare to scallop in. I'm guessing all of these scallops are definitely going to last the summer, well, as long as this weed growth is around. We are only really getting the scallops where we could see from the angle we're approaching at. So there's probably loads of scallops around here, we're just missing them every time. Some sort of leather pouch sticking out there, probably some sort of worm. And there's another spider crab saying I'm the king of the castle. They do this all the time, they find the highest rock and tend to sit on top of it. There's also two hermit crabs as well. It's an old builder's bucket. Yeah, he's moving it now. I'll leave him be. Plenty of dragonettes on the sand around here as well. Every so often we'd see a waft of, I don't know, almost like saliva and sand that comes out of the seaweed, all straight out of the sand. I'm not sure what this is, probably some sort of clam, or maybe a razor clam. Seaweed's starting to get a bit clearer now, it's a bit thinner, so I'm starting to see a few more scallops. They're not as well hidden. Also a spider crab that's got a nice afro on its legs and its head. That's a female spider crab. Me and Phil are gently uh, drifting in the tide. We're having to kick a little bit because there's not as much tide as there was in the first one. 
he's looking for the same thing I'm looking for, flatfish. Check out the long piece of seaweed on this one. This one looks really old. It's been sitting in some dirty sand. It's gone black underneath. Maybe some sort of hydrocarbons in the sand maybe. I'm unsure. Might be resting up against a piece of old iron, maybe a cannonball or something. It's more of these fish, like intermittent swimming fish. This field's just called me over, he's found something. Still can't even see it. Ah, I can see it now, the lights are on. Well, camouflage, you can see, I had to be within a metre, otherwise I wouldn't have seen that. That's why some of these we miss. Just goes to prove not even other fish would see it. Look at this. A small fry fish on top of its head. And that's probably how they eat, to be honest. They wait until a fish goes on top of their head and then quickly swallows it down. Phil probably saved that one's life and he didn't even know about it. Let's go in for a pat. These things you can normally pat, no problem. They rely solely on just staying still. That's their first defense mechanism. Second is swimming off really fast and third is trying to bury themselves. This one's quite placid. We're probably woken them up. Definitely big enough. Well over the legal size. I think the legal size is about 250 mil for these. It's almost the size of a flip-flop. Anyway, let's carry on. I'm sure there'd be more. Where there's one, there's normally a lot more. Just checked, it's actually 240 mil. That's tiny. Oh, can you feel? He's got another one. Slightly different camo one in this one. They can change the colour to depending on which seabed they're on. It's amazing how fish can do that. Again, I think this one's over the legal size limit. We're not going to take it, it's just far too small. Look at it, it's a little bit wider than my hand. My hand measures about 200 millimetres. Loads and loads of razor clams around here. Wonder if we dug around here, we'll, how many we'd find. Again, the seabed is now getting very, very silty, very fine sand, so the seaweed hasn't got nothing to grip onto. I've only got 60 bar of air left, so I think it's about time I start heading up. Might try and use the last 10 bar. I'm going to see if we get any more scallops. Again, well, this is probably the third or fourth dive I've done looking for this dive gear. And we still can't find it. Not quite sure if we're looking in the right place or not. But hey-ho, we'll find it one day. I'm sure of that. enough diving for today unfortunately so the Commodore Clipper which is in harbour we never really hear it do its horn and it's done its horn one long yeah. long blast so you can see the lights are red and we're wondering what's going on we've got a feeling a yacht was in its way looks like it look how close it is Well, that got pretty wet. 
I mean, I've got prune hands. My hands ain't even drying out because uh, the rain and the, from the diving. So I hope you enjoyed that one. We didn't really see that much. The tide was doing something really weird. So me and Phil dropped down that like cliff area a bit. Um, and then it tried to take us north and it decided to take us south. Then we hit the reef and it was trying to pull us over the top. Then we're coming back to the surface and it was trying to roll us upside down and spin us around as well, which is just the uh, abnormalities from the tide behind the reefs. Uh, the tide can't go anywhere and it just sort of hits the rocks and then comes straight up. Uh, in that case, it was actually trying to pull us down. So we're reeling and reeling and reeling and we weren't getting anywhere. The second dive, we went in looking for some of the, uh, the, the fishermen's or the divers gear, but we still can't find it. It's been down there probably three or four weeks now, so it's probably uh, well wrecked. But we'll still have a look anyway, because he, he wants his gear back, so we'll still look. And then we got to see a load of um, uh, Dover soles. Uh, stupidly, two of them. I don't think I was pressing record, uh, but um, I, we definitely, I definitely had two that Phil found as well. So hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, if you want to come on another dive, subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment and do the thumbs up. Helps the channel. This is meant to be summer now. I did say to myself, I'm going to make a lot more of an effort in the summer with the channel and try and get some more content out there. So, um, fingers crossed we get some better weather. But, I mean, this is just a bit of a tropical storm, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't say it wasn't tropical, but it's, it's a heavy storm. We haven't had no rain in weeks, so we needed it. Okay then, thanks for coming along, and I'll catch you on the next tide.